Hello, people. Animals and creatures. Welcome to Art for Well Being. That's beings with an S. It's plural. A show to end all shows. A time to watch, learn, listen. Hear, see, feel, be, do, have. Art, art, and more art. Visual art, human art. So, without further delay, let's give a warm welcome to our host, local celebrity, Judy Gittleson. Number five, and I am your host, and welcome, and I'm Judy Gittleson, and welcome to Art for Wellbeing's episode number five, just a reminder, number five. And I'm here today to celebrate the miracle of pollination. What a moment when the seed gets impacted. And the reason for that is the name Xenia. Our very well-being today is Xenia. And Xenia has two definitions, the word Xenia. And I'll tell you more about the second definition later, but the one we're going to concentrate on the entire show is the act of pollination. So welcome. And I am here tonight with my co-host, Michael Buteau. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm just very sorry that uh, our other um, co-host, Mavis, couldn't be here. She'll be here next time. But it's great to have you. Yeah. So back to Xenia and pollination. And we're going to go through this episode talking about um, a very well-being Xenia, about a painting, paint and response, Manners and Grammar by Amanda, and a little treat. So let's start with About a Painting. And right behind me is Think, T-H-I-N-K. And what's important about Think in this episode is that what got me to Xenia and finding it was thinking. I looked it up in the dictionary, I found the word, and I thought. What I'm going to talk to you about the painting about Think is the idea of symphony within a painting, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. And Michael, when you were first looking at this painting, what was it that struck you? Well, I noticed, like, you see the center. I, th I kind of think of a seed, and then as it, it kind of blooms out, there's kind of a burst or an unfurling, kind of an, like, just it kind of expands. So I just think that's really nice how you, like in um, pollination, you see the flower kind of bloom or burst, that kind of thing. And it's just like a really nice uh, nature aspect. And tying back to that, the idea of pollination is almost this wind up, this compression, yeah. and then the yeah, burst. And that, yeah. And what I'm going to go back to the symphonic thing is when I have the spiral going around and around and around, it reflects and echoes in the shapes of the N, the um, H, the curves it repeated. It ebbs and falls. It ebbs and falls. And in painting, you can do this by showing repeated shapes and also by having areas where it is without a lot of detail or areas where there is a lot of uh, frenetic um, either color or forms, but things that kind of crash into one another. And uh, back to the word pollination or about pollination, it's an impact and painting and an impact in its um, environs too. There's a sort of crash there, so um, that's interesting. And the other thing about pollination that we were talking about is that wind up and almost the dot above the eye is the compression point, the, the point where the energy bursts forth to. Yeah. And now we're going to go over to our paint and response section. And last time, as opposed to this time, we talked about the egg. And this time when we say the word xenia, that's about pollination only for fruits and plants and not about an egg. So I'm going to take you over and show you what came in from the egg. And this painting is of the egg and it is by Xenia. 
And here you see how her interpretation of the egg is in these big block areas. So that's really neat how she interpreted the egg. I love that painting. And then here I have a painting by Glenn. And what's nice about this is that he works with the um, paint going two directions. And paint is really cool that you can create not only a current, but a direction. And you can see his strokes are going this way, and in the background, they're going this way. So you see background and foreground. And then here's my egg, which what I work to do is to sweep around to, to create an object and also to have the current. And here I was working to have a very soft interaction between the current and the shape of the egg. And this next one is by Michelle, a very well-being who's been on the show. And here Michelle is working to create the triangular shape of the egg. And you can see just this energy of her egg. And then this is by Barbara. And look at that. And what's really cool about this piece is that the egg is bursting from the frame or from the canvas. That's really neat. And I have just a few more. I have a couple of, can you get a little one? We've got Alan's painting right here of many eggs. And here's by Erica. Lots of little eggs. And this is by Michael, my co-host. Very nice. Very nice. So please send your paint and response paintings to our Facebook page or come to the studio and paint with us. And today's paint and response is about the sprout, the moment that the plant becomes, where pollination happens. And now we go to paint and response. Hi, and welcome to today's paint and response section. Today, I'm featuring the sprout, the very first sign of spring, the cotyledon, the moment the plant, the seed, meets the sky. And you can see behind me the couple of stages of the plant. And so to illustrate that, I'm going to use some really exciting paint and some gels. I'm going to use three gels, soft gel gloss right here, uh, regular gel, matte, and soft gel matte. So we're going to compare a couple of gels which I can mix together with the paints. The paints today are heavy body titanium white, heavy body gold coarse interference, fluid Hansa yellow medium, fluid thalo blue, fluid green gold, and fluid um, nickel azo yellow. So before I begin, safety the paint, don't eat it, don't wear it, and don't inhale the dust from it. Let's go! I'm going to start with some interference green, and here comes the heavy gel mat with a little bit of color in it. The regular gel mat. Look at that, isn't that cool? It's sort of a transparent with just a little color. The regular gel mat can give us that, and it's going to dry matte. Matte medium is made with diatomaceous earth sea creature bones, mind, and look at how I can do it so thick. All these gels are in the polymer binder, so they all adhere to each other. I can mix the gels with the paints. And this is the soft gel gloss, which is gonna be a lot smoother putting it on. I'm gonna put some thalo blue up there. What's nice about paint and painting things from the uh, natural world, plants, rocks, wood, water, uh, paint has a current because my hand has a current. I'm applying it in a direction. And so it looks like um, something that came out of uh, the earth, like the weave of water. Look at how the gel gives me a little more texture. Get 
some regular gel matte there. Look at that. There's a nice texture there. And there's a little sprout for the beginning of spring. And the sprout is the first sign of spring, just a burst of spring. So paint on, people. And so Xenia, the word means the effect of pollination on a seed or a fruit. The other definition of Xenia is a young woman who we're about to see. And her parents named her Xenia because Xenia means friendly to strangers a host, xenophobic, we've heard of that, fear of strangers. So Xenia is a young woman whose parents are both German, and here is Xenia. Black, several colors, kind of soft. I think it's a lizard. Mmm. No, no, it's a snake. And what's the snake doing? I don't know yet. I don't have any snakes because I'm a different snake. An apron, 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 or apron, apron, apron. Doesn't it look like something's growing up out of here? And here's the earth. It's like a cross section. Yeah. And this is the earth, and this is the sky. Yeah. What kind of plant do you call that? <laughs> snake. Snake plant. Cool. <laughs> no, it's not snake. Um, I think it's a leaf. A leaf. Wow. And what's the weather like in that painting? Uh, warm or cold? Yeah. Which one? Warm? Warm. Okay, cool. This one used to be the letter B. Is it still the letter B or is it something else now? Wait, 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 wait. Yes. I saw B. Yeah, there's like the B. Power. Power Wayne Soros is B. Uh huh. And uh, bed also B. Mmm. Power Rangers and bed. Yes. Very cool. Okay, next we've got a horse. Horse. <laughs> and what is that horse's name? Does that horse have a name? 
A horse is a horse, of course, of course. But no one can talk to a horse, of course, unless, of course, that famous <laughs> horse is the famous Mr. Ed. Is it's it a pigeon. A, is a pigeon? Yeah. And is it a flying pigeon or a standing pigeon? Maybe it's about to fly or about... No, it's in the water. It's in the water? Yeah. Okay. Mm. And what's this a painting of? Leaf. <laughs> And what's this a painting of? Rainbow. And then it, what are the colors of the rainbow? Green, yellow, and the same blue. And that was Xenia in the Art for Wellbeing studio. And being nice to strangers or friendly to people is really an honor to have that opportunity to do and to welcome people into our lives. And among welcoming people, we're kind to strangers, we practice nice manners, we introduce ourselves, we do lots of things that we've learned from the section coming up, Manners and Grammars by Amanda, and today is about saying thank you. So let's take it to Manners and Grammar by Amanda. And we're rolling. Oops, <laughs> excuse me. Hello, this is Manners and Grammar by Amanda, and I'm Amanda. Manners are really important to help people feel comfortable. And so that's why we've included them in the show. So today I would like to talk about saying thank you. I've noticed that there's a direct correlation between how good I feel and how often I say thank you. Of course, the obvious people to say thank you to are your friends and your coworkers and your neighbors who do things for you. It's a great way to help cement the friendship. But the other group of people that I love saying thank you to are strangers out in the world. People who let me in ahead of them in the traffic, or people who help me with my groceries, or just, just people generally who are doing nice things for me out in the world. It's really great to be able to say thank you and build some goodwill and give them a nicer day too. So that's all I have to say for today. Thanks for watching. Next, we have a very important piece to this very special show. It's a uh, tandem painting that me and Judy did. Uh, it's kind of very, it has sprouts. It has what this show has. It just shows the blooming of spring. It's, it's a very beautiful thing, really, if you see how we use the brush strokes. And here it is.
that was tandem painting by Michael and myself. And what we're working on there is synchronistic painting and music making, painting to music and painting in synchronicity with another human. So we're going to keep building that. That was the start of something new. And you know how you, everybody likes to get in on the ground floor and see something in the um, happening, just like pollination. So that was the very first seedling, the very first glimpse of that. And now we're going to go over to right behind Michael are a, um, what do we call that, a salon style arrangements of paintings, or a, a salon style arrangement of paintings. And the center one, let's start focusing on that one, is pollination. And you can see it's a spiral that pulling in, that retracting at the same time there's a bursting, a beginning. And then around it we have a lot of things that are the pollinators, the hills, the trees, and the sky. Yeah. I just uh, like uh, the the middle one um, when you were saying pollinator. It just it just really looks like a bee. A bee. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I just when I first saw this painting, it really does look like a bee, and it's kind of nice because this you got the environment, the surrounding area, and then you got this one creature that can. Um, that can just create or something or maybe, who knows, even destroy it. It has the power to do a lot. Uh -huh. It's a pollinator. And I like the wind-up feeling of it that there's, when we were talking last week, we're, or last time we were talking about this uh, uh, mechanical thing, and in a bee there's a, a wind or a, or a, a compression, and that, that creates almost the energy going out that by coiling in this direction. It gives you the thrust to go out. And what I hope to replicate, or what I'm seeing there, is that winding in and uh, at the same time that producing out. And that pollination is like that, that there's this, when you think about a burst of pollen, you think about like a big cloud burst. So, and the butterfly is a pollinator, and the plants are there, and Another thing that's interesting is how when we hung the paintings, you can have them speak to one another and have a conversation or a dialogue between all the paintings. The little coil can come down to this small hill here, and the, the hill can be a continuation of the flat area there. You can have things come in close. That's what you can do with one painting or with many paintings, too, is putting them in neighbors to one another in um, adjacent re relation to one another so yeah it's uh, nice be it's like uh, just yeah adjacent kind of pieces to a puzzle that kind of makes it just this one it's kind of like one big painting and it's just really it's grand and today we're talking about um, uh, pollination and yeah. fecundity and, and beginnings, and you can create a narrative out of yeah. several paintings, and you crea create different narratives out of many, uh, you know, I could take these and tell a different story, and that's what's really cool about painting a singular yeah. painting and putting it together. And behind me again is think, and that think can, can um, contribute to how we paint, and that it can be a very intellectual pursuit, even though it's a, uh, painting might have an emotional response in the first place and a, and a human uh, feeling, but then you can come back and have it be like, oh, I'm going to tell this story. Oh, we have a story. Yeah, you know, Okay, of we're going to do a very quick story just, uh, for you. And we're very, on page 60, yeah. and today has been about Xenia, and we're going to wrap this it up. This one is uh, similar. It's a, about the um, ass and the grasshopper. So uh, just one day an ass was walking in the pasture he, and he found some grasshoppers chirping merrily in a grassy corner of the field. He listened with a great deal of admiration to this, this song and he asked very respectfully, what is it that is giving you these beautiful voices? And he asked if there was a beautiful food and they said yes because they were very fond of this joke and they said it's a dewy drink and they told him to try some. So the ass would eat nothing uh, and drink nothing but do. Naturally, the uh, poor foolish ass soon died. And uh, the lesson here is the laws of nature are unchangeable, just like these paintings. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.